everybody. Thank you for tuning in. We are joined here today with Sam Zimmerman, the VP of Programming at Shudder. And we are going to be talking, well, a bunch of stuff about you, Sam, but also about Shudder's 61 Days of Halloween. Yes. So thank thanks so thanks much for, for doing this. Yeah, totally. It's a joy. It's nice to meet everyone. Cool, man. Uh, I'm just going to jump right into it. The uh, So we're all old school fans here. And uh, you know what I never hear you really talk about is your time with Fangoria. <laughs> and uh, I, I would like to ask you, what was it like? Because I hardly ever hear anything about it. It was um, a lot of things. Uh, you know, <laughs> I joined Fango as an intern in 2008. And then basically just worked my way into being an editor there. And I, the, a lot of conflicting feelings really to, to be completely real. I mean, it was sort of the tail end of Tony editing and I learned so much from Tony Tapone and from Mike Gingold. I mean, those guys taught me so much about the genre. They taught me so much about honestly writing, about editing. But at the time, Fangoria had split from the company it was owned by. So three owners of one group split up and Fango went with one guy um to put it as, as nicely as i can not a great boss not a great businessman mm -hmm. it was so it turned into a little bit of a garage operation which in some ways was nice because fango i think you always think of as like horror fans you know doing the thing but it also came with a lot of hardship when you wanted it to be your job uh but at the same time a ton of amazing stuff i mean between tony between mike that's where my friendship with Kayla Janice started. Uh, and there was a time where Kayla and I worked together on the website and it was right around the time House of Psychotic Women came out. So I really got to know Kayla. Um, and you can even see that to this day. I mean, we did a whole collection on Shutter around her folk horror documentary. We just yes. did a new collection celebrating the 10 year anniversary of House of Psychotic Women. So it was wild, I, but it really gave me my start. It's when I started going to festivals. It's when I started meeting all these wonderful filmmakers. I mean. I have a lot of affection for the time of Fango as much as I have like reservations. <laughs> and you're still writing for, it looks like you have a, a blog, a shutter blog. Are you, do you keep up with that? I, I don't, we have like a, a, some, some great writers who contribute to it. And mostly that's just the bandwidth. I mean, I wish there was time where I could get back into writing. There was with the relaunched Fango, I was doing a column every issue just about like, weird festival movies I loved, like just real strange hidden gems. But even that has gotten a little bit tough as Shudder gets busier and busier. Yeah. So now you're currently the vice president of programming at Shudder. Can you explain the responsibilities and duties you have to handle on a day-to-day -day <laughs> day? <laughs> it's everything. Um, yeah. Is Shudder, so when Shudder first started, I came on as curator. And what that meant at the time was I was programming our library titles. So when Shutter first launched, and you think about the the first couple of years of Shutter, and we were just like a ton of Jean Roland and Mario Bava titles, and just like really cool Euro horror, cult classic stuff. We then built our ambitions to start acquiring new stuff and build out what the library meant, and just kind of all of that added responsibility. So now I'm still in charge of all the older library titles that come to Shutter. Uh, my colleague Emily and I go after our new titles, our acquisitions, including the original films we get up from the ground up. And I work with our colleague, Nick, on the original series. So from, a, from the perspective of original series and film, I'm kind of across everything, but I'm also materially moving things around on the service. So when you go to the homepage, when you see what's on Shutter TV, mm -hmm. I'm doing that as well. So it's okay. it, oh, nice. every avenue of Shutter is, um, I get to be involved in, which is really cool. Oh, Can awesome. I, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. I literally check the homepage of Shutter every day. <laughs> been, like I actually do it like in the morning. Sometimes I do it if I'm at work because I love just seeing like what did they add today. I do it. Yeah. Oh yeah, almost every day. That's really. I mean, the the secret is really Mondays and Thursdays, right? Like Mondays is when kind of new library stuff wow. comes in, and then Thursdays and Fridays are like the big uh, new films, new series, that kind of stuff. Okay. I like to think it's every day, so you just crush my <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's Christmas. I'm not trying um, to burst your bubble. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, Brandon and I, at least, uh, we've been with Shutter since 
maybe not day one, but definitely day two. Uh, I think <laughs> I, I remember hearing about it and then eventually was like, all right, well, let's check this out. Mm-hmm. And I remember the very early days, the uh, streaming options, it was like such a cool premise and I was really excited about it. The streaming options were somewhat limited. Mm-hmm. Um, and now current day, it's like the go-to service. It's like, you guys just keep it fresh. It's things are rotating in and out. There's the staples there, but there's always these cool, like, films that I never heard of. And the Shudder exclusives are obviously amazing. Um, can you talk about, like, that progression of Shudder? Absolutely. And and that's really kind. I mean, to hear you say that is is kind of what we want the ambition of what we want the service to be. So it's nice that that comes across. And it's nice that you feel that way, because the conversations that we have are very much in service of, OK, well, if, if you're a big horror fan and you get it, that's the dream. If you're impressed by it, that's the dream. And if you're not, then there's, I mean, there's always more work to do, but then if you're not, there's even more work to do. But the progression really started in 2016. Shutter launched in the summer of 2015. And in around 2016 was when we started having conversations of, well, we should be picking up new movies, doing our own releases, and what would those strategy look like? Uh, And a few different colleagues came in, and that's when we started going to markets and festivals and understanding what we could get because at the time we were still new we were new to this whole world new to this whole market this whole environment and we tried to launch with some really cool stuff that we felt people we wanted to see so our first couple of releases were things like Sadako versus Kayako which was really fun it was like you know the ring versus the grudge out of Japan Koji Shira Isi and then because we bought Sadako versus Kayako the sales agent in Japan had access to Naroi the Curse, which never properly came out in the US. So that was another really cool, like, Mm -hmm. oh, we can also bring things to the service that hadn't properly been released, that hadn't properly been available. We can be that avenue of distribution. So we did a few other movies like that. One of which is still one of my favorite movies we've ever released on Shudder is called Shrew's Nest. It's from Spain. And that played a lot of major film festivals, I think in like 2013, 2014. And never properly got picked up. So that was kind of one of the first titles I thought of. Let's go back and get that. Let's make sure people can see this movie because it's stunning and it's wild and it's crazy. And then really it was building momentum from there. I think a really big line in the sand for us was a movie called Revenge by Coralie Fargé. We adore that movie so much. And we saw its potential to really reach out into the world and pull people into Shudder. And I think once we picked that up and once it premiered at Toronto International Film Festival and then went to Fantastic Fest and then went to Sundance, we we could see our momentum starting to build and how we could capitalize that into bringing really exciting new filmmakers into the fold and and working with them. Yeah, yeah. because I remember back in uh, 2015 when I got that uh, in, uh, on Instagram, I got a direct message from Shutter. And it was like being invited to, uh, for the beta testing. Oh, was, <laughs> oh shit. I'm like, what is this? It was like being marketed as like a, like horror Netflix. I remember just like texting these guys saying, you guys got to check this out. And then so like from there, like like Dave said, we've been hooked. So, you know, congratulations on all that. I mean, really, it's it's thank you. You know, mm-hmm. like the fact that you guys are into it is is what keeps us going. So it's 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 thank you until you know until you're like do better and then we'll do better yeah <laughs> that's awesome so dave threw me under the bus and he's like oh me me and brandon got it from the beginning i, I did just that say, Josh. <laughs> i just got my first smart tv this year all right so uh i've only been streaming for a couple of years and uh dude i love it you can find so much stuff um man there's good stuff um, so I, I kind of have a, an offbeat question. Are yeah. you guys, uh, so I, you not only get new stuff, but you get some really good older stuff. And, uh, I heard somewhere that you were a fan of like, uh, Tales from the Crypt Keeper, which was this great cartoon. And I, I don't know where I heard oh, that. Yeah. I think <laughs> I read it somewhere and I, 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 it just occurred to me. I'm like, how come they don't have really cool cartoons like that? You know, you know, uh, anyway. Mostly because stuff will, the whole Tales from the Crypt, and it's all just boring stuff, is that the whole Tales from the Crypt franchise is under weird legal stuff. Like it's all super tangled rights. And I think Tales from the Crypt Keeper is almost definitely involved in that because I mean, I would straight up kill to have 
Tales from the Crypt on Shutter. You know, like it, it's mm-hmm. it's almost criminal. It's not streaming, and you're yeah. like, why isn't it on HBO? And then you come to realize it's all just, I guess, not boring, but like legal stuff that you're like, I don't, I don't care about this. Figure it out. The people <laughs> need Tales from the Crypt. Yeah. Um, so stuff like that, you know, you always run up against some weird rights or some weird, especially now as more services launch, you'll run up against certain companies saying no we want to keep it for this or we want to do it for this and but after a while if you if you keep going at it you'll you'll be able to find and bring the right movie there's there are a couple of movies coming to shutter i think within the next six or seven months that have been on my list like when we started in 2016 i had like a a small list in my back pocket that were like here's what i would dream to get streaming because I, i don't know if it's ever been streaming it's only new to home video I really want more people to be able to see these movies and slowly getting them down. Like Eyes of Fire, which came onto Shudder earlier this year, was one of them. Uh, when I finally got Blood on Satan's Claw on Shudder, it was one of them. It just never really been widely available in, in the sort of the home entertainment space. So there are a few that you just kind of have to be patient and they're coming. <laughs> they're coming. They're coming. <laughs> Was Blood Psycho Sisters on the list? Just curious. No, but if it's one of yours, I'll put it on the list. <laughs> yes! Uh, you want to Josh's list. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's on my list. It's been on my list forever. Um, no, I always, like, I, I will always take those those hardcore recommendations and someone's like, I've been dying to see this. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. I'll I'll try to go out and find it. That's awesome. You do, should you know, be it. careful what you, what you say to Josh because he's thinking right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like just going like I'm like gonna, I want to see the back s- of the refrigerator. I haven't seen that streaming anywhere. Where's that? Been <laughs> I mean, years, you know, a big one. A big one was just like a week or two ago. We got Soul Survivor from 1984 on Shutter. Mm. What a movie! It's it's yeah. it's so unlike anything else in the 80s. And I know a lot of people always say this, but it really is a precursor to things like It Follows and Final Destination. You watch it and it just has its own atmosphere and its own vibe. And I'm just so thrilled that, listen, there's going to be a bla- great Blu-ray of a movie like that, but I want to give people the opportunity to check the movie out first before they spend like $40 on yeah, a Blu-ray. Exactly. Oh. Dude, I saw that on VHS. I got it from Uptown Video, right? Well, it's not there anymore, obviously. But... Uptown Video. <laughs> um... Shout out to uptown video closed for 30 years <laughs> you like you know you also uh shutter added uh friends of ours death drop gorgeous they dra- added that of movie course. in a few months yeah. ago and we were like we we're like you guys made it <laughs> like, you're yeah, right, made you it. guys made it we we're yeah. so excited for them that's, that's i of- love that movie um when that movie started playing festivals i got in touch with the team and just wanted to know kind of everything about what they were doing and how they put it together and from the get i was like we have to bring this to shutter we have to figure this out and yeah. and we did it was great i'm so glad it's on shutter i think everyone right. should go watch death drop They're gorgeous amazing. and just see what like cool regional horror filmmaking today looks like because i think there's a lot of writing devoted to what the 60s and 70s looked like and what like real independence outside of the major hollywood system looked like but it's happening again now and it's happening mm-hmm. with the death drop gorgeous team and the Adams family who made Hellbender, which we released yes. earlier this year, they're just like in upstate New York doing their own thing. There's a guy named Bruce Wemple who I'm really into. He made Monstrous and The Retreat. He's, yeah. I think he's in New Hampshire. I, I might be, but again, it's just like, and Jordan Graham who made Sador just like yeah. off on their own, making really wild stuff out of the sphere of influence. It's so cool. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you guys are also putting on this amazing, uh, October month celebration, the 61 days of Halloween. And there are so many like good things releasing this month. Like, you know, Italian horror movie lovers are going to, you know, be thrilled. You guys have a bunch of Fulci and Argento films on yes. there, but you also have Argento's Dark Glasses, which actually I think was yes. released today. You got yes. the Ful- Fulci documentary later this month. Which is and great. Then, and yeah. then there's a ton of like originals and Shutter exclusives coming up. So, you know, we're very excited. I was curious if you, you know, not that you want to play favorites, but are there any of the films that are releasing this month that you're like, I am so excited for people to see? Um, I'm going to give you the annoying answer, which is all of them. I yeah. Mainly because <laughs> that's why they're in October. Um, yeah. You, when we saw Dead Stream at South By, um, yeah. and I, I've told this to Joseph Vanessa, who, who wrote and directed it, um, who I adore. They're so talented. 
usually the nature of, of this job is we can't release everything. That's the reality of the world. Like I might see a movie I love and for some reason or other, we might not be able to get it. And usually I'm very even keeled about that. And when I saw Deadstream, I was like, so, I'm going to be so mad. I'm going to be so <laughs> mad if we can't release this movie. It's so good. It's so wonderful. It's so like, when I, when I saw it, I knew that on the first Friday of October, there was no other movie I wanted to watch and I wanted other people to watch than Deadstream. It's such a fun time. It's so scary and so funny at the same time. Yep. So Deadstream is one of them. And then Dark Glasses, I mean, it's, it's Argento's first movie in over 10 years. You know, how could we not go for it? And then when we saw it and you see how interesting and fun and completely unexpected it is like it's everything you want out of Argento like these great chase sequences but then it's oddly sweet it's like almost a buddy comedy in some ways <laughs> while also being a giallo so that was a thrill to be able to release um and then VHS 99 which the, yeah. the whole company really poured ourselves into you know mm -hmm. we 94 did so well for us and we really had this great opportunity to put together a great roster of filmmakers and we got Joseph and Vanessa right from Deadstream onto VHS 99. And five years ago, we released Flying Lotus's first film, Kuso. And mm -hmm. I love that movie and I love Fly Low. And him and I have always tried to figure out what else we can do together. So it was really important to me. I was like, I, I think he would have an idea for this. And yeah. he came and blew us all away. Gosh. I mean, when everyone sees Fly Low's segment for VHS 99, it's deranged. I mean, yeah. he's pulling, he's pulling from Legends of the Hidden Temple. He's pulling from like all this kind of crazy stuff. And and created something unlike anything mm -hmm. else you've seen in the series. Um, Maggie Maggie Levin made this like in, insane Riot Girl segment. Johannes Roberts made this like purely scary one. Tyler McIntyre feels like a riff on American Pie. Like it, it, they just really knocked it out of the park for what the point of the film was. And then we're ending the month with Resurrection, which it, it, to me is the closest thing to a modern day Zulowski film. Like I'm a really big, I, I love Zulowski, I love Possession. I have this poster is for Zulowski's The Devil. Resurrection to me is the closest thing we get to this psychological thriller that takes you somewhere you never thought you would go and really pushes you to an extreme. So we're closing the month out. And Rebecca Hall to me is like the best I, I love Rebecca actor Hall, alive. So Yeah, yep, that's awesome. Yeah, so I was, I was able to check out VHS 99 and oh man, it's, it's a great film. And so that releases on uh, October 20th. Yes. And, you know, I, I think fans of the series would definitely enjoy it. And I also seen on your uh, Twitter that uh, it was um, announced the other day that at New York Comic Con that uh, VHS 85 will release in 2023. Like, yeah. I love that franchise. It's become, um, I love that it became like a Shutter original because the first film that released back in like 2012 would change the game for anthology films. How were you guys able to acquire such a project to kind of like open a door for upcoming directors? It was it was really the studio behind it, uh, Studio 71. Um, and, and the producers came to us and said, you know, we're putting together this new one. It's available to, to okay. collaborate on. Do you want to work together? And we really saw it as an opportunity to jump on and create something really special and hopefully reinvigorate yeah. what, you know, the, the there hadn't been a VHS movie in a few years. And we were so excited by the roster they had already started to put together between Chloe Acuno, um, Ryan Prouse, I, I, Timo coming back and making just like a, a monster of a segment, Simon. So it, it really felt like a no brainer to us. And it also felt in line with how we approach a lot of our exclusives and a lot of our originals, which is just like creating a space for these filmmakers to go nuts. Mm -hmm. Like we always, we always want to feel like we're in support of, of creative ambition. We're in support of showing our audience something they haven't seen before, taking them to a new place, pushing them a little bit, making them laugh. I, I think VHS felt like the right anthology for us. Yeah. It felt like here's a place for filmmakers to really plunge their own kind of psyches and minds and play with form and just have a, like a killer, killer time. Yeah. And there's another series that I'm enjoying. It's uh, the 101 scariest horror movie moments of all time. So yes. uh, can you share some of your favorite horror moments of all time? Yes. I will. One of them is in so the new episode uh, that came out this week talks about Lake Mungo. Yeah. And that was one of the films I was like adamant had to be on this series. 
Yeah. Because uh, Lake Mungo, I mean, even though it came out, I don't know, what, like 14 years ago now, it's the last movie that I remember watching at home and feeling like I needed to turn all the lights on immediately. There's just so something so dreadful, yep. especially about when you see what's on her cell phone. Yeah. And that's, and, and I rewatching the series, you know, I shot my interview for the series back in the spring and that's when we did production on the series. Rewatching all the episodes, I realized I end up talking about the same type of thing a lot. And it's always like just slow dread coming straight for you. And that mm -hmm. seems to be what really bothers me. I mean, <laughs> Lake Mungo, the, the Kiyoshi Kurosawa film Cure and the way the ghost just sort of is walking directly at you and you can't do anything about it. And it's yep. also walking in a way that's so unnatural and really yeah. kind of fucking you up. Yep. Um, those moments really get me. Uh, another moment I was really adamant about putting in the series was, uh, I mean, the whole movie in general, but the French movie Inside, I think yes, is yes, yep. like my favorite horror movie of the 2000s. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to quickly say, so you mentioned Lake Mungo and I, these guys have already heard me say this before, but that was back when they did those eight films to die for. Yeah. Uh, and I used to like look forward to that every year. I would want to watch all of them. They would do a screening at our local movie theater and show a bunch of them. I feel like, you guys are kind of doing like a very condensed version of that with these VHS films. Cause you're showing showcasing like different filmmakers, totally. and their own uh, short films instead of like eight, you know, f feature length films, but that's awesome. And it gives people uh, exposure to new, you know, filmmakers, but also something to look forward to. Like, I, d I just like that, uh, that idea of like getting exposure to people that you wouldn't typically have exposure to. And, and folks who, just have you know wild ideas that this is the avenue you know i don't i can't really say too much about vhs 85 because it's not it's coming out next year but when you see what these filmmakers are up to you're going to be like mm -hmm. they've they've gone down some roads it's very cool <laughs> that's amazing the uh you ever just sit back and take a breath like so sometimes i like i just sit back and i'm like we're we get screeners people send us their their movies they made in their basement uh or whatever and i'm like dude how cool is it that i get to watch all these like cool horror movies you ever just sit back and be like damn like i work at shutter my job is to watch really awesome horror movies on the daily and just be like wow every day every, I, day. I, every day you have to you just have to be like I, I mean, I've loved horror since, I, 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 grew, I grew up in the Bronx yeah, okay. and I don't know, I don't know why I think this is specific to being, growing up in New York, but maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but like we had that little box that goes on top of the cable box. Mm -hmm. They got you free HBO. <laughs> and when I was seven, I would just watch Castle Freak and Tales from the Hood over yeah. and over and over i've loved this genre since then and the fact that it's legitimately a career is unreal to me like i truly every day i'm just like thank you thank you to the world thank you to the universe hail satan that's amazing how many films do you get to watch every day every day i i think of it as like averages because i'm i'm rarely watching something every day but then there are days where i have to watch like you know four or five things so I would I would imagine by the end of the year there's some weird average of like two to three things a day if you count it out or divvy it up or yeah man. that's so insane like, yeah. <laughs> you're the luckiest guy around <laughs> the uh, so I I, I kind of have this really weird question um, I like really odd stuff and Shutter has a, a pretty good selection of odd stuff I'm not gonna lie but I also like um so i'm a big bollywood fan mm -hmm. i love indian um horror movies a lot of it is uh supernatural and ghost orientated and any plans of getting anything like that uh, like either on shutter or around shutter or even going into that market um because you're you're basically would, in the english speaking markets now i would like to um i i in terms of bringing more Indian horror to Shutter, I I doubt we would expand to a market like India. But 
I think if I can find the right companies and rights holders, especially to bring some of the older stuff to Shutter and really yeah. get it out there and available, I would be thrilled to. Um, it, it's definitely on the to-do list of what hasn't been widely available, what isn't widely available, what international horror cinema in some perspectives is underexposed. I know elsewhere, I'm sure people watch it all the time, but at least feels like to me in the US, there isn't a lot of ways to find cool horror from India. Um, I would be thrilled to. A newer stuff, there's a lot of modes of distribution with newer Indian cinema that is hard to crack into. You know, it, it's why we haven't had a chance to, to bring a lot of new school Indian cinema. Um, Kriya, which is on Shutter now, is the first film from India we've been able to bring to Shutter. It's really cool. Oh, I didn't even know that's on there. I want to write that down. Kriya. Kriya well, I got on, yeah. We got it recorded. The, um, dude, that's awesome. And, and they went through such a renaissance and like of horror in the like years and years ago. And no one knows about it because like, you know, it's, it's India, you know, you just think, oh, there, that's India, but they had some really powerful stuff. Uh, so I'm it, glad it's on the list. Exploring, you know, like we've been really fortunate to, to work in a ton of international horror. I mean, and it, as much as we can expand to, I'm thrilled to. Any, any other markets on the list that you can share? Well, I think we're going to absolutely continue our relationship and bringing a lot of really cool Indonesian horror to Shutter. I mean, yeah. we have Satan Slaves 2 coming in November. Working with Jocko is amazing. He, to me, is one of the best working horror filmmakers today and releasing Satan Slaves. He wrote The Queen of Black Magic. Um, he, we released Impedigor. We worked with Timo on May the Devil Take You Too and the VHS films. I mean, there's something really special happening in Indonesia. And for as much as they'll have us, continuing to release really great Indonesian horror out into the world, or at least into North America, we will absolutely continue doing so. That's awesome. Uh, we, we stumbled upon, uh, what is it? Argentina, Argentina horror. That's, I mean, uh, Damien who made Terrified, uh, what a great movie we are. Oh yeah, Terrified. That. Yep, that was, yep. that was good. I forgot about that. I yeah. love that movie. Talk about like a up and coming market, you know what I mean? Like, damn. Uh, I so kudos to you guys for getting the stuff, man. It's like a dream job. Thank you. To just, you, I I would love to just reach out to people all day, be like, oh, can you send me some films? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. got to be awesome, man. So, there's a really there's a really cool movie. I, I should bring it back to Shutter, but there's a really cool movie from Argentina from I don't know, maybe like eight years ago called She Wolf. That's in black and white, and it it reminded me a lot of. Um, movies like habit or the addiction mm. um just these real like very city-based punk rock lo-fi sort of shape-shifting psychological breakdown horror it's really really cool yeah, yeah. i would i forget where i just saw i just saw something about that film oh, recently cool. it was in like a magazine yeah. or something i don't even know what i was reading but yeah it sounded super interesting it is it's a, it's a rad that. movie so Sam, I know that we are crunched on time, but I just wanted to say, um, you know, thank you for everything that you and Shudder have been able to bring to the horror community. Like this month, the, you know, the projects that you guys are showcasing for the 61 Days of Halloween, I think it's amazing. Like there's some super exciting things on there, but just in general, I know we've been like huge fans of, you know, the different um genres and subgenres that you guys have identified and what you've also brought just to like, the community, like the focus on queer horror, um, you know, the black horror, uh, the French new wave stuff. Like you guys just bring like a focus on so many imp like important subgenres, um, and I just I think it's great, and I know we love it. So thank you so much for that. No, I really like thank thank you. I mean, the fact that it comes through, the fact that you have those very kind things to say, hopefully, mean we're doing a good job. <clears throat> There's always more to do. <clears throat> and like more really cool stuff to do. I mean, even it's funny to be talking about 61 days of Halloween because my mind suddenly goes to like oh, November and December are going to be yeah. just as yeah. bad. Like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we've got Satan slaves too. We've got Mandrake. Um, yeah. Yeah. We've got a vampire. Oh, we've got a father daughter vampire road comedy coming called blood relatives. It's like <laughs> paper moon. It's called, it's like paper moon with fangs. It's beautiful. Oh, um, a wounded fawn is coming in December. Christmas bloody Christmas. Like it, it's, 
it, it's we're in the prime time, but we're we're not done. We're not done past October thirty first, which is kind of our our reason for being. And we didn't even mention Joe Bob as like that's <laughs> yeah. like such a huge like a huge uh, shutter state. Of course. I remember mm-hmm. when he broke the internet is, you know, when he first came on and now here we are, you know, like enjoying all these seasons of him and we got the the special coming up, I think next week too. So it's nice that that has become like a fun, like legend, like, Oh, Joe yeah. Bob broke the internet because that night was not fun for us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, I remember like, that you guys were tweeting yeah. like as we were going along, like, oh, it's you know, we're working on it, guys. <laughs> we're all we're all like just losing our minds in the office, just like, oh no. Um yeah. The, I'm I'm very grateful that now it's just like a fun story. Yeah. It's a you know, it's everyone's Friday night, you know, they they enjoy it. You know, get together and just turn the TV on and just watch a film and bring it back to the old days with Monster Vision, you know. So that's what's really nice. I mean, you know, and we did a, a secret script quote unquote secret screening a week or two ago, which was really fun on Shutter TV. And that really got to the essence of like what I hope Shutter can continue to be too. Mm-hmm. You know, we we showed everyone dark glasses a few weeks early. Okay. You know, no one knew what it was gonna be. It played on Shutter TV once. Mm-hmm. If we can continue bridging that gap of yes, we're a streaming service, but we're very hand handmade and curated and trying to create a communal experience and how fun that can be, then we'll hopefully we'll continue on the right track. Yeah. yeah. You guys also do live stuff. So like it's not just like streaming, it's like you're you're live too, right? Like Yeah. We'll I and and hopefully we'll we'll build even more you know i don't know. i have so many ideas yeah <laughs> and also what was it the chainsaw awards you guys have so much going on so it's just like, well that and that's really the team of fango i mean like yeah. I'm, I'm very grateful they they thought we'd be a good partner for that and mm-hmm. that we can continue to be and and i think creating that's another sort of wonderful communal experience of well yeah we should have our own horror award show yeah. we should all get together on a sunday night and watch it and and cheer or or you know get angry because whoever we wanted to win didn't um yeah. it's really fun and it's fun that we get to create that together yeah Dude, that's so now, awesome. if you guys are listening you don't have shutter what are you waiting for <laughs> get that subscription <laughs> it's not expensive you're gonna enjoy it you know so yeah I, I know i remember that when that used to be a question like should i get it it's like no it's not a question just no get it. <laughs> <laughs> sam yeah uh, i'm gonna say it's, it's probably the best horror streaming site out there so mm-hmm. good kudos to you man there's there's nothing like it so that's that's very kind i i, I hope we continue to I, I think there's a lot of really amazing stuff coming in the next couple months over the next year um i'm really excited for everyone to see what we've been up to oh i can't wait you you know what makes it different you guys it seems like you put heart into your movies when you do get it and a lot of other streaming services don't do that we have to we are we're straight up a small team who loves the genre and one of the things we always say to each other is everything has to be worth doing yeah 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 cool man the uh well thank you so much for coming on sorry we we're a little bit over time for you and we don't worry don't worry this is great dude it was Um, awesome talking to you great where are you where are you guys we are in rhode island so pvd is providence so you know not too far away from the bronx so you're no, I, I had only up here. My wife and I came to Providence like a a year or two ago, just for like oh. a. We were like, oh god, we got to get out of the city for like yeah. one weekend. Yeah. Um, and it was beautiful. We had a great time. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, if you're ever in the oh. area and you guys got something going on, you know where to find us. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so thank you Are so much, any, for us, man. Has anyone started like a genre fest up there? Uh, we're we're, we're working on it. On it. <laughs> we are uh, hoping. Uh, so we're we'll we're trying right now. I'm actively uh, talking to um, local people to do a local fest. Like we have the Rhode Island International Film Fest. There's yeah the Screen Fest. There's the Vortex Film Festival. Like yeah. there's a lot of film fest here, and some of them like Vortex. We're 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 partnering with them. Uh, they they do horror and sci-fi, yeah. but uh, we we are real local guys, and we're like actively trying to get a big local thing going with uh, Mass, Connecticut and Rhode Island and 
just trying to bring all the filmmakers together and really push push it out but that's cool keep keep me updated on on how that comes together and i'm sure we can get some shutter stuff up there and and oh, cool. you know help cool, in any man. way we can i awesome. appreciate that appreciate that man thank you so yeah, much of course. no everybody of course. thank you for uh tuning in and have a great night yeah have a great night